All right, in the previous video, we created the SPI master, went through the code for the creation of the SPI master in Verilog. Again, no chip select just yet. We'll add that in later. And uh, that's on this left, this left side here. And now we're going to be looking at the test bench for that. So test benches are great, super important, always useful to test your code out in a waveform simulator to make sure that things are behaving correctly. You don't want to be trying to debug this stuff on hardware because it is painful. So always use a simulator to at least give yourself a cursory check. I mean, I usually use self-checking test benches when I can to make sure that uh, things, are, things are correct. The, the less time you can spend on hardware, the better because it's tedious to try to figure things out there. All right, so we have uh, SPI mode that we can declare. Uh, clocks per half bit, same as the SPI master parameter. Uh, and some main clock delay just to set up some main clock that's going to be oscillating at some frequency. We have some signals here. This is uh, system Verilog, so we can use logic. Uh, basically reg, same idea. We generate a main clock for uh, this I clock. And then we instantiate our UUT or our unit under test, which should look like an instantiation of the master that we saw before. The signals we're going to be driving are master TX byte, master TX data valid, and we're going to be looking at master TX ready. And we're going to be register, we're going to be looking at the master RX data valid and RX byte to make sure that we're receiving what we expect we to be receiving. And one way to do that is to create what's called loopback, where what goes out on Mozi gets looped back in on MISO. So the SPI master is actually talking to itself. So what we transmit out should be what we receive back. And if that's the case, then things are working correctly. Um, that's I find loopback to be a pretty pretty good way to, to give yourself a cursory check to make sure things are behaving as, as you expect. I created a task. I like using tasks in Verilog, uh, system Verilog, to do something. It's kind of like a function, except you can drive signals from it. So uh, you can drive master TX byte, which is uh, one of the signals here that's driving our UUT. And we, so you can, you can also set up, um, you know, look for clock events and waiting, waiting for certain things to happen instead of a task. So wait for your, wait for a clock edge. And then when we see that clock edge, drive our master TX byte, master TX data valid, click, kick it high for one clock edge and then kick it back low again. And then wait for the master to be ready. So make sure, wait for uh, wait for us to be done saying that the, the byte went out. Um, and then that's the only task I have for support support task for this particular test bench. Um, this is required for the simulator. Drive a reset condition here, and a couple simple tests. Send a single byte, which is this the name of this uh, task that we created. So I'm going to send out C1. And then I'm going to receive something. And what's received on master RX byte should match what we transmit on the transmitter. So I should receive C1 here. And we'll make sure we do. And we test out a double byte, so two bytes back to back. Um, and seeing that we receive, so we'll send BE. And then we'll send EF after that. And we'll see what we receive. And finish indicates that the test is done. So let's take a look. I have uh, this handy dandy EDA playground website, which I find pretty nice. Uh, it's an online simulator tool. And if you go to this website, edaplayground.com forward slash X forward slash five, lowercase h, capital C, six, um, you can actually see this code here. It's already all created for you. This is uh, publicly available. So go ahead and take a look. The, the testbench.sv is on the left side here. That's the code we just looked at. And then the design.sv is, it's a Verilog module, but that's the master, uh, SPI master that we talked about in the previous video. So I really like this tool. It's, it's easy to share for, for this type of thing where I, I want to share with you. You don't have to download anything. You don't have to install anything. You just need to go to this website, uh, go to this link, and you can run the code that you see in front of you here uh, by clicking the run button. Let's do it. And it opens up this EP wave, which is a waveform viewer. Very nice. Built into the web page. Hey, this is pretty slick. So uh, let's see what we did. We ITX byte is the data that the master is, is shipping out. We have the data valid pulse here. So a single, single clock wide data valid pulse. You can zoom in on this stuff to make sure it's looking good. So yep, it's a single clock pulse wide. And it looks like we, we drove C1. 
we drove BE, we drove EF, that looks good. And down here on the ORX byte and ORX data valve, we received a C1. After it was shipped out completely, the receipt was done. We received C1, we received a BE, and we received an EF here. So this looks like it's working, and you can, and it, it is working, because uh, I spent time to debug this. So you can go in and look at, you can make sure that your clock counts and your clock edges look good, and you can see internal signals. So this is pretty slick. So you can look at your unit under test, and you can add signals. Um, you can look at your test bench code and, and uh, append things to the waveform, for like, like that, for example. And uh, I, uh, I'm a big fan of the simulator. It's, it's not super powerful, but it's really, really simple and fast to get using. And it's all web-based. You don't have to install anything. Um, again, you can zoom in, zoom out, jump forward, jump backward. Oh, and it's worth also showing there's a console output. If I move this up, you can see it uh, down here. So uh, I have some those report, those um, down here where I have this display sent out blah receive this sent out this receive this those are these just being displayed in the log down here so sent out c1 receive c1 sent out be receive be sent out ef receive ef perfect looks like it's working so we have a spy master running in mode three right now you can play with this you can change modes you can try different clocks you can try different frequencies uh, but this should be good um, so it looks like the the basic spy master is up and running um, you can try setting other combinations of data and resets and making sure things are good, but uh, this, this should be working. And uh, the next video is going to be introducing, um, you know, this is the low-level SPI master. The next video is going to be introducing a, a wrapper around that that's going, to, that's going to add the chip select functionality. So we can drive chip select low, drive multiple bytes in a row on the line. Uh, so let's dig into that right now. Hey, I just wanted to jump in at the end of this video real quick to say, please check out patreon.com forward slash Nandland and consider supporting me there. I would really appreciate it. It helps me cranking out these good tutorials and these videos. So if you found this valuable, uh, consider heading over to Patreon and supporting me. Keep me making good content. Uh, in addition to that, please consider getting yourself a Go board so you can actually program this code and try it out on real hardware. They're available at nandland.com. And thanks for your support.